Okay, hi everyone. Thank you so much for waiting. We're going to give everyone a couple more minutes to join the session and then I will kick off. off. If um, For some housekeeping rules, if you could all switch your video cameras off um, and also remain muted throughout the session, this will just ensure that there's no distractions when Dr. Yuzra and Dr. Helen Graham are kind of talking um, through the slides. This session is also being recorded, so I will send the recording out to you all um, after we finish the session today, so you can listen back in your own time. Brilliant, so I'm gonna kick off. So hi everyone, thank you for joining today's session. So today's session is titled The Aesthetic Arena. So the aesthetic arena is a really dynamic and rapidly evolving field. And as our population ages, non-invasive kind of treatments are becoming more popular and, and more mainstream. Therefore, the need for kind of highly skilled specialist practitioners is rising. Today, I'm really lucky to be joined by Dr. Yusra, who is a dental surgeon and anti-aging expert, along with Dr. Helen Graham. So Helen is our course director for the online postgraduate certificate in skin aging and aesthetic medicine. So today, Dr. Yusra and Dr. Helen Graham are going to be discussing challenges and opportunities practitioners face in the current aesthetic world. They'll also be discussing the importance of practitioners having that in-depth knowledge, expertise and confidence to be therefore recognised and trusted by their patients. So I'm going to kick off by providing you a bit of an insight into who I am for those of you who don't know me. I'm Daisy James. I am one of the course advisors here at the University of Manchester. Now, um, the PG Cert, the online PG Cert in Skin Aging and Aesthetic Medicine falls within my portfolio of courses here at the university. I've got over four years of experience within student recruitment and higher education, and I manage a variety of different online blended learning courses here at the university. My main responsibilities are delivering webinars such as this one, but also individual consultations with you as prospective students so that you can make that really informed decision about kind of your next um, academic move. My main role, like I said, is to really support and offer guidance at every stage of your decision-making and application journey. So please do get in touch with me. My details will be at the end of this webinar. If you want to kind of discuss your circumstances, discuss your kind of career goals and, and aspirations, I'd be really happy to help. Now I'm going to hand you over to Dr. Helen Graham, who's going to provide you with a bit of an insight into who she is and her role at the university. Hello and thank you for joining us today. Um, it's great that we've got this opportunity to talk with you. Um, I'm a lecturer and a programme director for the online um, postgraduate certificate in skin ageing and aesthetic medicine. So my background is um, in extracellular matrix um, research. So I started my um, scientific career um, looking at the extracellular matrix collagen um, fibril deposition in, um, in developing tendons, which led me into um, how um, the extracellular matrix changes with age. And I also looked at that in heart failure, and that led me to heart failure and aging. And now I'm in the extracellular matrix in um, skin aging. So I've got a scientific background in um, the components, the extra matrix components which change with age um, and these are key targets in um, skin aging which are targeted by um, a lot of the topical rejuvenation therapies. So my um, my particular interest and, and my hope is that I can help you to understand why the skin ages and, and how it changes and what the molecular basis is for that. Um, we also have um, a, a consultant dermatologist who's uh, Dr. Tamara Griffiths on the program who adds the, um, the medical and clinical background um, to, this, um, to this training program. Um, so uh, I've published um, peer-reviewed articles, 26 peer-reviewed articles and, and book chapters, um, and I gained my PhD in biochemistry from the University of Manchester. So my interest in skin aging um, continues um, by developing this programme where we're really keen for practitioners in the aesthetic arena to really have a full understanding and knowledge base behind um, the skin aging process. Okay, thanks Daisy. Um, so I'd just like to introduce Dr. Yusra to you, and um, Dr. Yusra is going to take you through her, her stellar background. 
So um, I'm a dental surgeon and I have a background in head and neck surgery. So I've been in clinical practice for the last 10 years. I've been doing aesthetic medicine for the last seven years. Um, I've been teaching uh, aesthetic medicine for the last six years with various different organizations across the country, leading both basic and advanced um, injectable courses. So I have a clinic now in London and I have a clinic in Liverpool. Um, and we're very much a holistic clinic and safety is at the paramount and, and the basis of everything that we do. Um, so our, our clinic is, um, I think, one of a kind in that we uh, treat our patients in terms of skin aging, aesthetic health, skin health. Uh, we look after their mental health and mind health. We have a clinical psychologist that uh, works alongside us, um, as well as dentistry um, and, uh, and uh, body aesthetics. So um, I'm very, very honored to be um, speaking today alongside you, Dr. Graham. Quite, quite amazing, everything that you've achieved. Well done. Thank you. Okay, Daisy, so um, thank you, Dr. Yusra, for, for that summary. So um, we just wanted to um, try and give you some understanding of, of what the course can provide um, and, and really what the um, challenges are uh, that you might face as clinicians and how this course could hopefully address those. Um, so we have a quote here um, from Ataya, um, aesthetic surgery has evolved in the past years. Can you take us um, to the next slide, Daisy? Um, so really we, we can um, suggest that the reason for this is that we have an increasing aging population and um, particularly in the UK but also globally um, and this aging population has a desire for for um, not actually looking their age um, and this really is driving a lot of the um, non-invasive aesthetic arena and um, so Dr Yusra I was just want, wanting to ask you in your clinic um, what's the demographic that you see um, seeking aesthetic procedures? So we see patients of all ages, um, but what we do know is that surgical procedures, particularly plastic surgical procedures aimed at treating um, and, you know, facelifts and anti-aging procedures have rapidly declined, whilst those seeking alternative non-surgical procedures have rapidly inclined. So the, the surgical sector has gone downhill, and that's partly because of the popularity and the, the efficacy that the ability of non-surgical treatments to make such a significant difference, therefore delaying the need for patients to have surgery. So we're seeing older and older patients coming in for treatments. Um, it's a huge opportunity uh, because that means that this sector is booming. It's one of the most rapidly expanding sectors in the UK and globally. Um, but with that obviously comes challenges and it's really important to understand how to treat patients of different ages, how the skin ages, um, and um, how to treatment plan in a safe uh, manner. Um, so it's something that we treat a lot of. I have um, a team of four doctors now in my team um, and nurses, and um, certainly the, the number of patients seeking more advanced procedures for anti-aging is, is definitely on the rise. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks for that. So I think what um, what we've built into the programme is um, a, a, a standardised um, set of procedures or um, systems that we would recommend for facial assessment. So so the, the practitioner can speak with a, a new um, client or patient and and really be able to say, what to understand what their concerns are but also to understand um what the facial changes are and the concerns that that patient has um but we we also provide the the knowledge behind the causes of those changes so we need we need our students to understand okay here's the facial anatomy here's the bony structures the musculature the fat pads what is it that change and the skin and what is it that changes with age that's driving those um, uh, the change in um, facial morphology so that you get those clinical presentations that people are concerned about so so our students should by the end of the program have an understanding of why their face is changing and therefore uh, why the, the patient's changes why the patient's face are changing um, and how they can really approach 
um, the best series of um, treatment for that patient. So um, I think the feedback that we get from um, students on our master's programme, which is currently running, is that there's a real lack of um, theory and knowledge and evidence behind a lot of the treatments. And that's what a practitioner really needs to be able to feel confident um, in in their um, in their area in their field so we we really hope to be able to provide that knowledge base um, yeah. I don't so, know add <laughs> something yeah. I, think, I think you're spot on there um, uh, dr. Graham and that the the a lot of the teaching if you like uh, at the moment is one day courses here and there and practitioners almost going out in the wild um, very much pra practicing on their own and there isn't their formal regulation or formal training programs and that means that there's always something lacking so they might understand the arts and bits but not the science behind the art mm. when you understand the science behind it and you understand how this how the face changes not just the skin but like you said the different layers of the face the skeleton the muscles the tendons the fat pads and the skin then you'll understand how to formulate a treatment uh, plan to address every single layer of the face and that means you're you're treating the patient holistically mm. uh, and everything marries into place and it falls into place and it makes perfect sense and it means that your treatment plans are evidence-based and systematic um, rather than just well let's make you look a little bit pretty but not really understanding how or why mm. yeah as, yeah so it's it's really thinking about what what's best practice for for that patient um, and and so we our team um, are a, a combination of consultant dermatologists we have plastic surgeons um, and uh, and also um, um, academics who are, are in the field of uh, dermatology research and aging research so you know the evidence uh, that the, the <laughs> We're, we put a lot of evidence uh, uh, emphasis on making sure that the students are seeking um, the evidence base before they actually make any decisions on how they on the, how they choose to practice. So um, I, I guess just finally, I, I was going to touch on. Um, I think we've covered the rising demand and popularity of the invasive cosmetic treatment. I, we could mention the social media aspect and and. Um, the concerns that we might have um, around people seeking aesthetic treatments in order to um, have the perfect Instagram image and so on. Um, and there's that does bring in some ethical considerations, I think. Um, so I think we do touch on that. We, we cover that in the programme where we, we, we do look at um, um, the, the rationale for people seeking treatment. Yes. Um, Dr. Yusra, would you would you have any thoughts around that? I mean, look, I think social media is a double edged sword. Um, and um, and when I say that there are positives and then there are some serious negatives that we need to be mindful of. The positives are the ability to reach a wider platform and showcase your work in your portfolio and communicate with professionals and your patients easily. Um, but the downside is uh, filters. I think filters are probably the worst thing that's happening for um, us as practitioners and also for people's mental health and mental well-being. Um, and that's because it's, it's a distorted form of reality. And so patients are coming in often with photographs of uh, their filtered cells saying, this is what I want to look like. Um, and whilst that's driving their inquiries and they're coming in because they want to look better and they, they are seeking an improvement to their aesthetic appearance, um, or they want to look younger or more youthful, it's really important to manage expectations um, it's really important to ensure that safety is at the forefront of everything that you do and ethics is at the forefront. Not everyone is suitable for treatments and for non-surgical treatments. Um, not everybody l will look good with big lips or needs big lips. And it's something that's really important that that's communicated to your patients. So I think that forms part and parcel of the ethical considerations um, and also facial assessments. So I often say to patients, uh, you know, I have a clinic in London and a cl clinic in Liverpool, and the demographics are very different. The, the look is very different and what they're seeking is very different. And so that means you need to tailor your approach and how you're speaking to your patients and how you're assessing, but also education is key. Educating yourself and then educating your patients to say, well, look, you know, Angelina Jolie looks great with that set of lips, but I couldn't pull it off and maybe that's not the best thing for you. And here's why. And doing facial mapping and facial assessments and explaining about art and proportion and balance. 
Um, and when I'm teaching, um, my delegates and my aesthetic uh, practice and in, in, in my um, other teaching um, commitments, the second slide that I have on the day is a picture of um, Donatella Fasacci, who's a beautiful woman, but unfortunately went a little bit too far. And I always say one of the most important things is knowing when to treat, but also knowing when not to treat, knowing when to say no. And it's up, up to the practitioner to say no, guide the patient if they're unable to see, because we do know that 10% of the patients that will come in to see us will have body dysmorphia. And so it's important to know how to screen for that um, and where to um, send the patients if they need a little bit of extra help in that respect um, and uh, when to treat, like I said, and when not to treat. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's good to have your perspective, um, Dr. Yusra, thank you. Um, so just moving on um, with uh, a quote from um, Convalenza, it says that the skin is the envelope of self and therefore the visible manifestation of personal identity. And it's quite a nice way of summarising how important um, our skin is and how we perceive each other and how we perceive ourselves. Um, so um, Dr. Yusra has touched on this um, in, just in the previous um, uh, slide where it's becoming increasingly clear that practitioners need to have a, a pretty good understanding of um, the psychosocial impact of skin aging um, and, and really how that affects people's perception of themselves and why they are seeking this treatment. Um, so, um, Dr. Yusra, do you have anything else to say about the psychosocial impact? Because um, it's leading on from what you were just discussing. Yeah, it's something that I'm really passionate about. Um, and I think that um, when patients come to see us, they will come to see us for um, their face or their body or their teeth, and they want to improve the aesthetic appearance. But I often say, and they might come in with a specific feature, be it their nose or lines and wrinkles, they might not know what's wrong and they'll just say, look, I just feel old and I want to look better. Um, but I always say they're not a feature. So they're not, they're not just come in as, a nose, you know, they find that as a, as a person and as a mind and as a, a, a behavioral analysis that needs to take place. Um, so there's a person behind the, the feature that we need to take into consideration. And I think that's why the cons consultations and the assessments, it's not just facial assessments, it's a full holistic consultation assessing all elements of the patient's um, journey and uh, for me, what I have seen in my practice is that the majority of patients coming in seeking treatment are bothered by their appearance. So there's a self-esteem issue there. And that's what's driving them coming in for treatment. Otherwise, they wouldn't come to see us. Um, so it's something that I don't dismiss. I don't take lightly. And it, uh, it's a very integrated part of my um, discussions, consultations, and treatment journeys for my patients. And I find that you know, when patients come see me, for example, one of the things that I do a lot of is facial deformity treatments and, and reconstruction. And um, they will come and say to me, I, I can't, um, I won't sit next to someone at dinner because I'm really bothered by how I look or I'll avoid eye contact or I'll change my hair so that my, you know, I'll, put, I'll hide my face behind my hair or I'll wear a hat or even if I'm driving, if I know that I'm going to stop at the red light and someone is next to me, I'll, sit, I'll stand back a little bit so no one will see me. So they're bothered by their appearance. So there's that, that self-esteem issue. And when I treat them and when they come back to see me for their follow-ups or maintenance and reviews a year later, I say, how have you been? How has the treatment been? Nine out of 10 will say, I feel so much better. They don't say, I look so much better. I feel so much better. I'm so much more confident. Um, I'm taking photos with my children and my family, whereas before every photo would be deleted. So there's a massive psychosocial element and a driving force for patients seeking treatment that shouldn't be um, capitalized on, but should be really, patient needs to be looked after holistically. And um, I think there's something to be said about the psychological elements and the well being impacts of having treatment. It makes a massive impact on our patients. And in the aging population, patients often come and say to me, you know, 50, now we're working until we're 65, 70. And patients will come and say, I just don't feel like I can go for that promotion or I don't feel as good in my job because there's this 25 year old who looks so much better and I feel 
they may not be judged, but they feel that way or they feel less confident. So they're not going for that interview or that promotion or they feel they, they um, are felt, feel like they're being held back by their appearance. And so um, I have seen the quality of life improvements of having treatments. Um, and I think it's something that's not explored enough or touched upon enough. Um, that personally, in my clinic at the moment, we're doing an audit to see how patients are um, presenting pre-treatment on a psychosocial and quality of life uh, basis and, and assessing how they are after. And what we're trying to demonstrate is that these treatments are actually not just dealing with skin aging, but there, there's an emotional health benefits as well. Yeah. Thank you. And, and that really, that really sort of brings it all together. And it's uh, one of the, one of the aims of the program is, is that we hope students will, um, by having the knowledge around communication and how mm. to, um, um, do the facial assessment, but also, um, actually communicating with the, with, with the patient themselves about their general well-being, it really gives that um, holistic patient-centered care approach um, and I think it can boost the confidence of the practitioner to be able to feel that they're um, they are treating that patient to the you know to the best of their ability um, which I think when a lot of practitioners are practicing independently they don't always feel that um, there was one thing that I, I forgot to mention that I should have done was um, I think one of the benefits of the program that we hadn't anticipated but we are experiencing with our blended masters program is that there's an online community already um, in place so um, once you've um, registered on the program you will be communicating and working with um, peers who are also on the program which means that by the time you graduate you've developed relationships with those um, with those uh, practitioners um, and and your peers who, who might be across the globe but can share good practice in the future after you graduate so it's a way of um, main of um, establishing a good network with your trusted peers to be able to share good practice in the future um, and I think that's something that everyone can benefit from really um, um, so that nobody is practicing in isolation. You've always got um, um, clinical support. Um, it might not be down the road, but in terms <laughs> of uh, in clinical input, um, it's very valuable for a second opinion. Definitely. Um, so just to summarize the, um, the last two points, we, we are, um, we are keen to make sure that um, we embed the um, consent process and the communication with patients protest process and and to make sure that that um, practitioners are understanding the ethical practice and um, there's a lot of interesting and gray areas in um, the practice of aesthetics medicine and um, we do ask students to consider you know when is appropriate to actually treat and Dr. Yusra has um, actually mentioned this earlier about just because a, a patient comes in for treatment doesn't mean, mean to say that they have to be treated and I think that's um, something that an early practitioner might not appreciate and um, you don't always have to treat those people so so we try and make people think about you know when is appropriate to treat um, and so by having that, by having that knowledge and, and that ability to assess the literature, to really be able to look at a study and say, okay, here's a new treatment, here's a new mode of practice. Um, it's been done in this trial. How, how do I know that the study is robust? Um, was it properly controlled? Has it been peer reviewed? And if you can tick all of those boxes, I think by the end of it, you, you should be able to say, actually, yes, I believe this study and I'm willing to implement that into my practice or no, I'm going to wait for further evidence um, because I don't really approve. Uh, I don't really feel that that, that study has been fully validated yet. So we the one of the one of the key aims is for us to to make sure that you as students are able to assess um, assess the, the evidence base. Um, 
and also to provide that confidence that you know about um, in the treatment process, you know about the danger zones um, and you also have the confidence to, if there are any adverse events, how to act in a timely manner um, and you've, you've got that responsibility to the patient to make sure that you follow up um, uh, any, any treatment and, and the aftercare and um, to make sure that you are practicing um, to the best of your ability um, in in a safe um, and patient-centered way. Um, sorry, Dr. Ujira, I sort of I took over then. Do you, do you have any thoughts on, on those last two points? I, to be honest, you took the words right out of my mouth. So okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll go with everything that you said. I think the whole point exactly is, is also learning. Um, I think the key really to, to the course is that you're, you're going to be understanding really the theory behind everything that you do. You'll understand how to consult your patients. You'll understand how to assess your patients, both in terms of um, aging, so aesthetically and artistically, but also ensuring that you have a patient-centered approach in your, and, and the safety measures and how to, what to treat, what not to treat, and how to treat complications. And I think that's a really, really good and important point. And the point about a support network, I cannot emphasize how valuable that is. That is probably the, the most valuable thing, to be honest. Um, and, and you said, it's people across the globe. That's amazing. Um, when I have a case that I want to discuss with my uh, colleagues, seldom are they in clinic with me at the same time. And that's the beauty of the technology that we have now. Um, I had a patient the other day who had a, um, a potential complication. The first thing that I do is I, you know, I, I get the consent from the patient and then I get a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth opinion from my trusted colleagues. And that means that you're able to suddenly six great minds become one and you're able to really deliver the best possible care for your patient. What is better than that? I really think that this is utilizing technology to the, it's telemedicine in a way. So it's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Daisy, I'm just conscious of time. Um, brilliant. Thank I'll you take, so I'll much. Hand over to you. Brilliant. Thank you, Dr. Helen, and, and thank you, Dr. Yusra. It's been a real pleasure to have you both on the webinar today. And it's been really nice, Dr. Yusra, to, to kind of hear your expertise and, and huge amount of knowledge in this area. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you on today's call. So as I said at the beginning, um, my name's Daisy. I am the course advisor for this particular course, so the Postgraduate Certificate in Skin Aging and aesthetic medicine. Um, my contact details are here and, and one of the things I really love about my job is kind of talking to you as prospective students and really getting to know you um, and your background, where you've come from, kind of your expertise, um, because we're all individual and it's nice to hear about your story. So do get in touch with me if this course is something of interest. I'm happy to kind of support you through that process. Um, I know it's a big decision, a big commitment in terms of your time. So you want to be absolutely sure. So here are my details. I will follow up um, off the back of this webinar with the recording, but also with various other links that I think would, you would benefit um, from listening to. Now, I know um, we are running slightly over time, but that's absolutely fine because it's all good stuff. We've had a few um, questions come through um, about kind of the course itself. So, um, the, the kind of um, question that I've got is, do you offer any practical kind of elements to the course? And Helen, I'm going to pass that on to you if that's OK. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so this is not this is an online only programme. So there's no practical element. Um, it's it's mace, it, its aim is to provide you with the knowledge base behind um, ethical and safe patient centred care. Um, there is a plan to develop an additional bolt-on, if you like, um, uh, in terms of practicals, but um, due to the current global pandemic, that's um, not been appropriate at the time. Um, so just be aware that that's, that's something that, that we aim to develop, but we cannot offer that now. So this PG cert is knowledge base only. Great, thank you, Helen. Um, Dr. Yuzra, I've just got a question for you, actually. Um, what, what kind of do you like and enjoy most about, about your job? I think for me, it's seeing the emotional impact that the treatments have on my patients. Um, that's something that I'm really passionate about. I love, I love people, I love science, and I love art. 
So for me, it combines my three passions and ultimately it's, it's seeing my patients health improve and their well-being improve and seeing them sometimes come in like this and walking out like this and and that's really an amazing thing to be witness to and part of that journey it's it's a pleasure it's an honor for me it's chicken soup for my soul <laughs> <laughs> i quite like that um image in my head and it, it really does show dr as you through your passion it really when you speak it really kind of shines through so thanks for for answering that for me and um, a couple more about about the course itself um how much is the, the postgraduate certificate is a question that I'm often asked by prospective students. So the total cost of the course is £3,900. And that's if you choose to, to kind of study the, the course in its um, entirety. You are able to, to kind of complete individual CPD units that come at a cost of £1,100. Now, you must complete the first unit, which is a prerequisite, the fundamentals of skin ageing, before you can progress onto the other units. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, and obviously, we are mid-August, which I can't believe how fast uh, 2020 is going, but we are kind of coming towards the end of, of this recruitment cycle. So if you are looking to, to apply to the programme, I would really um, strongly recommend submitting an application or absolutely talking to me before you do so um, very, very soon. Um, like I said, I'll send the recording of this session today out to you. And obviously, if you've got any questions um, off the back of that, please do get in touch. But Dr. Helen Graham, thank you as always for joining it. And Dr. Yuzra, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on today's webinar. Thank you to all of our listeners um, and I hope to, to, to hear from you very soon. Thank you. Thanks, Daisy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Take Daisy. care. Bye.